Hi, my name is Britt and in this video I'm going to show you how I made a life-size version of my favorite Pokemon. Why you know it? Better. As a kid I was obsessed with Pokemon and I spent countless hours on this little thing. I also collected every single card I could get my hands on and even have some graded ones. We also have Pokemons as our garden decoration, but I figured they needed an upgrade. That's why I 3D printed this Charmander solar lamp. It turns on as soon as the lights turn off. There are three different modi that can be selected via a switch on the back of the solar panel. This is the first one, which is emulating a flame. Then there's one where it fades, one where it's constantly on, and you can of course turn it off. I really hope you like this build and let's get started. I searched for a 3D file of Chamanda and found this awesome model by Patrick Fanart. After downloading it, I made the flame hollow and added a thread to it. Go follow the instructable link in the description should you be interested in a detailed explanation of the process. Then I cut the model into multiple pieces so that they could fit onto my printers. I decided to use up a lot of old filament I had lying around, that's why you can see so many colors later on. Some of it was up to 7 years old. If you're working with such old filament, make sure to dry it, otherwise it's going to end up looking like this. I still had some issues, but since the print is so big, it didn't really matter. The flame is printed with a SLI printer. Once I was done with the flame, I printed the rest of the model on my FDM printers. Here you can see me adding more weight to the feet and covering it with epoxy. Next, I added the cables to the tail. You can pull them through the small holes with a wire and secure them with tape. Now it's finally time for the assembly. The prints were done with a layer height of 0.2 mm and a nozzle diameter of 0.6 mm. It took more than 260 hours to print and about 5 kg of filament. You can save some time and reduce the amount of filament you need by selecting thinner walls. But I wanted the model to be really stable. Now we are going to smooth the pieces with modeling clay and automotive body filler. Next, we are going to sand the whole piece, make sure not to melt the plastic. I used a layer of epoxy to add my stability. 
and had to sand the piece again. Next, I used two layers of filler primer to get an even smoother result. The paint I wanted to use required a black primer, so I airbrushed everything black. Then, I used a bronze automotive paint on it. Sadly, I wasn't happy with the result because I didn't think it looked realistic at all. Therefore, I used a copper effect paint, which develops a patina over time. Getting the electronics was quite easy, because all I did was to steer them from a solar lamp. Next, we are going to unsolder the LEDs. A great trick if the solder won't melt is to add more new solder to it and it'll melt easier. Place your LEDs onto the tail and solder them in place. Place all the other components into the case and screw everything shut. And that's all that's to it. I really hope you enjoy this build. Now that I made it, I really want to build a life-size squiddle fountain and a barbasol planter. I hope you stick around and subscribe for more.